Welcome back to another instalment of New Zealand's Bird of the Week, where in this video I will be talking about the Isles' of Harrier. Birds the size of a small eagle that's alongside the larger Haas eagle were the dominant predators in pre-human New Zealand. I hope you enjoy. Named after James Isles, the former director of the Nelson and West Coast Museums, as well as being a paleontologist, Isles' Harriers were among the dominant predators of New Zealand in the times before human arrival, and were quite the unique animals. Around the size of a small golden eagle, as around 3 to 3.5 kilograms in weight, as well as having compact wingspans of around 2 metres, made them around 4 times heavier than the living swamp harriers which live in New Zealand today, making them the largest of their kinds known in the world. Their body structure and proportions are reminiscent of goshawks, with them, from the skulls, also appearing to have high levels of directional hearing, likely hunting the prey in a similar manner to them, hunting birds diurnally in dense forest, being so similar that they were indeed mistaken for one when they were first uncovered. They were both large enough and powerful enough to have predators upon the nestor parrots, including kia and kaka, waterfowl and the many songbirds in the country, not to mention the slower moving and more visible kereroo, which would have made an ample meal, not to mention some of the smaller mole species if they were up to it. This in turn meant that due to their size, they were second only to the Haas eagle in size in the South Island, and in the North Island, where the eagles were not present from what we can tell, they were the largest predators in their ecosystem. This is supported by the remains of animals like Kiraru, North Island's Kokako, Kaka, and Finch's duck bones all being recovered in a midden site, with the remains in rock shelters and cave entrances, suggesting that harriers may have nested frequently at such sites when available. The taxonomy and nomenclature has proven to be quite convoluted given the description of their bones. Initially named as Circus Isleside in the mid-20th century from bones found in Pyramid Valley in the South Island, remains essentially identical to those found at the site had in fact been found around 100 years earlier by biologist Augustus Hamilton, and discussed by Henry Forbes, with the material originating from the Tiote region in the North Island. Forbes named the remains C. Hamiltoni and C. Chutensis, but since no holotype was from what we know ever formally named or deduced from their lacking description, these names, particularly the first, are generally considered as Newman Newsom, whereby an intended scientific name slash names lack an adequate description or is yet to be or not published. C. Chutensis is generally considered valid, however, having priority over Isleside due to its description being done prior, as well as that both species could be referred to both the South and North Island populations, potentially subspecies, if not species, with the North Island birds being a fair bit larger for reasons that will be explained later. The revolution too is intriguing, as their large size through island gigantism has proven to be quite the interesting story, with their large size being influenced and selected for by a range of factors. From genetic studies utilising the mitochondrial DNA, something possible given their recent extinction, it was found that they were to the surprise of those conducting the study to be most closely related to the living Australian spotted harrier, and diverged from them quite recently, only around 2.4 million years ago. A similar case was found for the Haas eagle as well, given their closest relatives were also far smaller birds when compared to themselves, being the also Australian little eagle, with their time of divergence being very similar to the harriers around 2 million years ago, as did several other birds, like the Pukeko and Takahe, black stilts and pine stilts, as well as the Australian raven and the New Zealand raven. This therefore shows that there must have been some kind of broad pattern going on in response to a certain dispersal event, given the very similar times all of these different birds diverged from one another, and said event was found to likely be a climatic one. New Zealand, back in the Miocene around 20 million years ago, was a very different place from the largely temperate climate of today, with much of the country being covered in lush tropical forests, with crocodiles, large turtles and tropical oak species all being prevalent. By the Pleistocene Epoch, however, which began around 2.6 million years ago, the last glacial period had set in, and New Zealand's climate became much colder and drier, leading to many of these tropical species being wiped out by the rapid change, with the dense bush retreating and being replaced by steppe or open shrublands, much like the forests of present southern Australia and Tasmania. This, coupled with the rise of the Southern Alps, led to a very different New Zealand, and one that would prove more suitable for only temperate living birds migrating or being blown across the Tasman. With many niches left vacant and large predators being absent, the ancestors of the Haas Eagle and Isles' Harriers could take advantage of this, and were then able to balloon in size to be able to prey on the numerous large bird species like antbills and moa. Their time of divergence from their Australian relatives matches up very closely indeed to the onset of the Pleistocene, and as such, it is readily apparent that both the lack of competition and suitable habitation led to their large increases in size. Their bone remains indicate that they were quite sparse in terms of numbers, but that they inhabited a range of environments across the country, being most widespread in the dry forests and shrublands of Canterbury northwards in the South Island, 
and from the Wawarapa to the Coromandel Peninsula in the North Island, ranging from the heights of the subalpine zone down to sea level. Isles' harriers were impacted severely once Polynesian settlers arrived, with great swaths of their forest and shrubland habitats being burned off and replaced by grasslands. Their larger size and small wings for hunting in dense forest was now a disadvantage, as they would have not have been as effective at the soaring and gliding necessary to hunt frequently enough over more open environments, as is the case with the still-living swamp harriers. Predation from Pacific rats also led to a decline in their prey species, with human hunting being another factor that led to many birds being killed off, apparent due to them being present in middens, as well as some of their bones being used to make tools. By around 1400 AD, the moa were all but extinct, and house eagles disappeared from the fossil record around the same time. Isis harriers may well have survived for a little longer given their more generalist diets, although the continued pressure from people, and a great loss of their habitats over such a short period of time, meant that they were soon to follow. Around this time, swamp harriers, circus, approximums, begin to appear in the fossil record around the time of the former's decline and extinction, appearing to fill in their niche in the process. Despite their considerable size differences, they appear ecologically similar enough to competitively exclude one another, meaning that only once the endemic Isles' harriers became extinct could swamp harriers become established, something supported by the near absence in the fossil record before human-induced environmental changes began. Their extinction after Polynesian settlement is well documented and accepted, although some relics populations could still have lingered as recently as the 1870s if a certain account is to be believed. Charles Douglas, a surveyor and explorer who conducted extensive explorations of the West Coast throughout the mid to late 1800s, claimed in his monograph on the birds of South Westland in 1899 that he not only shot, but ate two raptors of immense size on the Harst River Valley and or Lansborough River during the 1870s. He notices, quote, The expansive wing on this bird will scarcely be believed. I shot two on the Harst. One was 8 feet 4 inches 2.54 metres from tip to tip. The other was 6 feet 9 inches, 2.06 metres, but with all of their expansive wing, they have very little lifting power, as a large hawk can only lift a duck for a few feet. So no one needs to guess up any of these legends about birds carrying babies out of cradles, as the eagle is accused of doing. Douglas therefore claims, at least when it comes to his mention of the legends of birds carrying away babies, that he brought down two harse eagles from where said accounts very likely originated from, although his mention of a large hawk also means Isles' harriers could very well be more likely given their proportions were more gracile and hence couldn't have carried as much weight as Douglas notes. Douglas's journals are full of references in regards to killing birds, including Kakapo, which were once plentiful on the mainland before mustelids were introduced, and stating that while not being very fat, were good enough for soup. Douglas's observations on wildlife are therefore considered generally trustworthy because of this, with his detailed observations and measurements as a surveyor, leading further credence to his story of the two raptors being a legitimate one. In light of this, and that Isles' harriers likely persisted longer than harse eagles due to their less specialised niche, this remarkable account may well have been the last account of a person interacting with these birds, and shows that they would have indeed survived as a relic population for longer than was thought. And with that, I thank you for watching this instalment of New Zealand's Bird of the Week. For next time, you are now able to vote for the Imbers Petrel, medium-sized gadfly petrels known only from fossil bones that's well being known of from the 1960s, or only described in the mid-2010s. With that, I'll see you next time, whenever that may be.